I have lived in a creative household for, well, my entire life, so it has never seemed impossible to go down a creative path. But I've come to realize that many people hold back or are held back from venturing into a creative industry because it doesn't seem supportive or a real job. I'm here to prove that wrong as I meet people doing their thing, working in creative jobs and surviving, who would have thought, and hopefully I'm able to show all of you that it is possible to do whatever you want. My first interviewee, Emily Kennell, works at the National Gallery of Victoria as a curatorial programs officer for audience engagement, as well as being a writer and arts professional from Canada. So she is obviously lovely. Graduating in 2014 from the University of Toronto with a Master's of Art, Art History, Emily then moved to Tasmania with her now husband and then to Melbourne, where she now has to deal with me. So audience engagement essentially... It works on anything, um, touches on anything in the museum that has to do with the visitor experience. Mm-hmm. So um, that includes our front of house department who yeah. handle ticketing, um, calls, emails from members of the public. Um, it works with our public programs department, mm-hmm. so they plan the Friday nights program, they have the public lectures, and yeah. um, it also covers our members department, um, the members lounge, all of the members programming, and then um, our children and families and access yeah. programs as well as our mm-hmm. sort of schools learning programs. Wow. So, <laughs> um, and including that, anything within the gallery that is uh, sensory. So if we have an artwork that you can touch mm-hmm. or that, you know, during Triennial, you could smell yeah. Cecil Tolas's work, um, anything that's sort of interactive in that way, yeah. uh, we have a hand in. You studied in Canada. I did, yeah. And you did art history? I did, yeah. yeah. How does that intertwine into mm-hmm. your job now? Working for such an amazing institution, mm-hmm. you really do need to get to know collection yeah. um, and I'm excited um, you know because it is an international collection mm-hmm. that some of my strengths are already there but what drew me to this job was um, I've always felt that you know art should be for everyone yeah. and I find that um, often the way we talk about art especially within academia yeah. it's not very accessible and especially being passionate about contemporary art which a lot of people don't see as being for themselves. It's kind of like a no-no job yeah, as well. Yeah really exactly um, but contemporary art is about our contemporary world so it should be the easiest for people to understand so I wanted to help make that happen. How do you um, kind of connect with the teens and Mm. are you kind of working with younger people to draw them into the gallery? Yeah definitely so we've found it's hard to pull those audiences in Um, so we want the teens to do it for us so we do have a teen council Mm -hmm. um, that I work with we meet once a month and we look at programs coming up especially our art party events which are pretty major Uh, we do want the teen council to do a lot for us Mm -hmm. Um, how do you get involved into the teen council um, it's application based Mm -hmm. Um, so we just we sort of piloted the program two years ago and then this year we opened up for applications yeah and we received a lot more a than we lot expected. yeah what yeah. do you look for in those applications um there's a few things we look for we received you know all of the applications we received were strong yes. and what they all had in common was an interest in the arts and a passion for the ngv which yeah. is really exciting yeah definitely. Um, what i was looking for uh were evidence of you know teamwork we yeah. want people who can work together as a team, Mm -hmm. evidence of sort of extracurricular activities, it doesn't need to be art based. In general working for the NGV we look for experience anywhere so yes I studied and yes I did my masters but I think one of my main strengths is the work experience that I've built up Mm -hmm. so my greatest piece of advice to anyone looking to work in the arts like we're aware yeah. there are a lot of jobs going on mm-hmm. um, you just need to be willing to put your hand up for anything yeah. so volunteer wherever you can um, run clubs run organizations even while you're studying have a blog yeah. like you do um, be ambitious be self-starting yeah. um, and and work as much as you can Definitely. do as much as you can at the same time mm-hmm. as you're sort of progressing in your direction um, and never think that you know anything's not quite right for you or beneath you or you know not exactly on your one yeah pathway because yeah. I can guarantee you that it's not really a straight line you'll do Love. a lot of this yeah. um, <laughs> and you never know what meeting or what moment will then help launch you into something mm-hmm. that's really exciting oh that's great <laughs> <laughs> that being said it's hard work. yeah <laughs> well, 
Georgia Logan is a recent communications graduate from Deakin University and majored in public relations with experience in publicity and communications within the arts sector. Learning that media and public affairs isn't about Instagram, I was curious to know what Georgia gets up to on her day to day. <laughs> Ever changing, as yeah. I just mentioned, I just spent all morning off site doing an interview with one of the interior designers for the Rig Design Prize, That's which really is cool. opening in a few months. Um, mm-hmm. But it kind of will range from being on a photo shoot, doing interviews, wow. or writing, or talking to journalists. Like it literally varies, like so day to day. How has media and communications kind of changed in the NGV? Because I guess did you used to have films and interviews and stuff? Because I've noticed your um, YouTube channel. Yeah, it's exactly. Like you're so it's quite. Videos and I mean, like I've that. only been here a bit over a year, but I think uh-huh. the media landscape in general is changing quite rapidly, and everything's kind of moving to a digital space. Yeah. So it's just kind of keeping up with those demands. Like we still have our print media, obviously, but balancing our print with our digital readership yeah. as well. So that's why like the great photos and the video content comes in because I think you can. S- definitely tell a lot of a story in a video yes I mean you can in words but like with exactly with a video you can literally just make something evolve and just make it flourish so I think video is quite powerful but yeah I think it's definitely it's going to a media like more of an online space so I um interned here in my last year of uni uh-huh. and then I was doing that while I was studying and then I started freelancing yeah. and working here kind of part time while I finished mm-hmm. my studies and then it turned into a permanent role. That's cool. Yeah, so How do you kind of get into that internship and working part time here? Um, it was literally I think no matter what you do like you need to be very passionate about it yeah. like I think in my last year of uni I did three internships mm-hmm. while studying and working so it was kind of like I think internships are a great tool in uni especially to test the waters but then there's you know you've got to balance like you've actually got to live your life and make yeah. money so I think giving things a go if you've done like I all of my internships were different mm-hmm. so some were internal some were like external agencies so kind of keeping that variation and just giving it a go like as soon as I started here I knew that I loved it like mm. I loved it before I even got here yeah. so it was just putting in all of the energy that I could and really devoting myself to learn as much as I could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was kind of how I started. My last interviewee is Elizabeth Gage, a sessional educator at the NGV, with a primary focus to educate through art whilst promoting visual literacy, higher order thinking, communication skills and enhancing students' understanding of themselves and the real world. We also discovered that we both really like Hague's chocolate. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I led a professional learning day for art teachers mm-hmm. in the northwest region um, and we were learning about how you can integrate art into other curriculum mm-hmm. areas and also giving them some ideas for their art lessons mm-hmm. and their art units as well. What did you study to get this job? Uh, so I first started doing a Bachelor of Arts, uh-huh. Bachelor of Arts, sorry, <laughs> um, and I double majored in art history and Italian. Cool. Yeah and then after that I kind of I didn't know what to do from yeah. there. I was just like, oh, what's, what is there for me to do in Melbourne <laughs> in relation what to art? What were some options that you were thinking of? I all, I've always wanted to work in an art gallery. Yeah. And at that point, because I was so young, I was mm-hmm. only 20 at the time, I didn't know how to get into yeah. a place <laughs> like this. And I wish I had a little bit more support and guidance and I wish I kind of put myself out there a little bit more, but mm-hmm. that's okay. I've always <laughs> loved teaching mm-hmm. and working with kids. Um, so I did some volunteer work at a primary school just mm-hmm. to see if it was for me and I loved it. Yeah. So after my degree, I then went into um, doing my diploma of education okay. in primary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then I started, straight after that I went into a primary school and I've been teaching for 10 years now. You weren't doing this job, uh-huh. what job would you choose in the gallery or outside or in anywhere? anywhere? My absolute dream, mm-hmm. dream job, like yeah. since I was a kid mm-hmm. um, was to be an art curator. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's what I always wanted to do. So when I started mm-hmm. learning about art in high school, yeah. I was always drawn to the theory side. Mm-hmm. So I loved the practical yeah. side of it, but I was always drawn to the theory. And my, I still remember my art teacher, she ins- inspires me to this yeah. day. Oh, so like I still remember learning about artists and mm-hmm. artworks and she was just amazing. She was so um, energetic and really passionate about it. Do you kind of take that on in your own I think I'd like to think so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why I went down the art history path yeah. rather than the practical side. Um, yeah, so I've always wanted to be, to do, be an art curator. But thinking about my experience mm-hmm. so far, I still love working with kids. Yeah. 
and I think that's something that I all, will always do and I'm passionate about education, yeah. passionate about art, mm-hmm. um, I'm passionate about inquiry learning, so having been able to merge the three yeah. is, yeah. Thank you for watching the first episode of I Want Your Job. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.